night. Joining us now live from Lviv, Ukraine, NBC News foreign correspondent Matt Bradley. Matt, what is the latest? Well, I was just driving down from Kharkiv in the northeast of the country, and we've been on a several long day, you know, drive all the way from east to west. And what we've seen is regular bombardments, air raid sirens, a population that is really very much on edge, even when they're far from the bombardments that have been shelling in places like Kharkiv, where we started our journey. Now, uh, just a few days after we left Kharkiv, we saw uh, shelling that went from the outside of the city. When, when we first started, we were hearing it just in the distance. And then we started hearing it very, very close to the center. And that's when we decided it was time to leave. And so we took off. And since then, the Russians have been taking, uh, taking that city to task. I mean, they have been shelling in residential areas, hospitals, in Freedom Square, just right next to the hotel where we were, and just shelled and just nearly destroyed what is essentially like the city hall and the opera that was right near it, uh, killing civilians and, you know, uh, using cluster bombs, which the U.S. Uh, hasn't used in decades. They're banned by 110 different countries. Russia is not a party to the ban. The United States isn't party to that ban. But the international community really, really discourages the use of cluster munitions. And we're seeing them used uh, quite in a quite widespread way, especially in Kharkiv. And the reason why is because these cluster bombs, they drop and then they they cluster. They spread sort of bomblets uh, around it, an area, and it makes it very hard to target places that don't have civilians in them. Instead, they're essentially indiscriminate bombing. And so that's what's so threatening about them. And that's really the tide that we're seeing turn here. We're really starting to see the Russians as they become more frustrated, because remember, they really believed that they would be uh, have an easy victory here, that the Ukrainian military would flee and that their overwhelming military capability would take over the country and that some cities like Kharkiv, Russian speaking cities, might welcome them with open arms. That has not happened. And so we're seeing a dejected, frustrated military that probably signed, didn't realize they were signing up for this, um, you know, moving into cities and city centers, not being able to take them. And so we're starting to see civilians in the crosshairs, on the front lines. And that's what we're starting to see in Kharkiv. Uh, and it's, it's really very, very sad. Um, we left that city a couple of days ago and we moved south um, to Dnipro, which is an industrial city right in the center of the country. And since then, we've heard a lot of bomb sirens and some bomb raids. We haven't seen quite as much in the way of actual bombardments. But then now we cross the country, and that's where we joined an exodus of hundreds of thousands of cars who were crossing the country. And this was really shocking. Uh, we, we spent hours and hours in traffic crossing successive uh, checkpoints with Ukrainian soldiers who were extremely jittery. You know, at one point, um, we were wearing our body armor, and I was kind of dozing off in the car. Uh, soldiers came up to the car with AK-47s drawn, demanded we get out. They made members of my team uh, sit, uh, sort of kneel on the ground with their hands up. And uh, I was with my hands up, too, standing, staring out into the woods while they checked our cars. And we could hear them cocking and recocking their AK-47s behind us. It was absolutely terrifying, guys. And that all is to say that the situation here, even when they're not on the front lines in places like Kyiv or Kharkiv, it really is just a population that is on guard because they're worried in addition to the shelling that they're seeing and this massive convoy of armored vehicles and tanks that are coming down from the north, they're worried about these sabotage squads of Russians that had made their way into the capital of Kyiv and were starting to wreak havoc long before uh, the front line started to move towards that city. So there's a lot to worry about, even in places like here in Lviv, where we've been hearing since I arrived here late last night, the air raid sirens going on and on and on even though there hasn't been a single bombardment that was audible from this city. So, again, this is just a population that is just waiting for the other foot to drop. And here in this city, this is a springing, this is a jumping off point to the border with Poland and Hungary. There are a lot of folks here who are desperate, just absolutely desperate to get out. Guys? Uh, Matt, Matt uh, last night we heard uh, President Biden talking about uh, reinforcing the Ukrainians, getting more weapons to them. We've been hearing the EU, uh, NATO nations all talking about shipping weapons to the Ukrainians. I'm wondering from your vantage point in Western Ukraine whether you are seeing evidence of that or whether you're hearing on the ground that actually all of those supplies, uh, those military supplies are in fact coming in. 
I mean, I got to tell you, Joe, uh, I just got to Lviv last night around 1 a.m. after this 16-hour okay. drive from the center of the country. But every place we've been since, in this long drive we've had all across the country, everybody who says, when we say we're Americans, they say, mm -hmm. we need guns, we need help, we need support. Tell America to send weapons, to send help. That's the message we keep getting. They're welcoming this. Uh, they are, you know, even after this situation where we were greeted at gunpoint, you know, once we stood up, once they were satisfied that we weren't uh, we weren't carrying anything bad in our cars, they were all smiles and they were slapping us on the back and they said, you know, screw the Russians. I mean, except they didn't say screw, but did you mm -hmm. know? So uh, yeah. the, uh, there has been this really spirited movement here with people who are saying, if you're Americans, if you're from the West, you can help us. You're in a position to help. Um, and they don't, you know, they really feel like they can fight this. They can fight the Russians off. Even though this is Russia's battle to lose, they think they have the upper hand because they do. Uh, and they have shown so far they've belied every single military assessment that has come their way uh, and surprised and, and, and really impressed the world. Guys? All right. The NBC's Matt Bradley, thank you so much for your reporting. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.